It was the 911 call that shocked America. Miss Debbie, you're going to have to shut up, okay? A rude operator sounding like she was mocking a woman who was facing the crisis of her life, trapped in a flash flood. This will teach you next time don't drive in the water. Now the family of the woman who drowned is breaking their silence. She called her for help. And that's the only reason why she called her was for help. Debbie Stevens was delivering newspapers in Fort Smith, Arkansas, when her car was swept away. Please help me, I don't want to die. As Debbie's SUV filled with water, she called her mother-in-law, Diane. She said, please come help me. Don't put me out of the water. I'm stranded and I don't want to die today. I'm going to drown. And I said, call emergency now. I can't get to you. But what the dispatcher, identified as Donna Renault, said to her was shocking. Miss Debbie, you're going to have to shut up, okay? I'm scared. I've never had anything like this happen to me before. Well, this will, this will teach you next time don't drive in the water. At one point, Debbie ends up apologizing to the dispatcher. Couldn't see it, make him on the or I wouldn't do. I don't see how you didn't see it. You had to go right over it. So. Debbie's sister-in-law, Rebecca. Even in those moments, her last moments, she was still Debbie. She was still genuine and sincere and kind and loving and respectful. One hour later, first responders found her dead. We know. Inside Edition was invited to the memorial service held for Debbie over the weekend. Amazing grace. And it turned out to be a double service. You see, Debbie's 80-year-old mom died three weeks after Debbie. Her family believes she died of a broken heart. I do think that that played a big role in her death. She was broken hearted. Her friends filled the pews, a community united in grief in the untimely deaths of two women gone too soon. But even in their deepest grief, her family's message is one of forgiveness for the 911 dispatcher. I do forgive her, even though it's hard. Please help me, I don't want to die. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is me, time for reaction. So today I was going to react on this story that came out of Arkansas where this lady by the name of Deborah Stevens had called 911 and she needed help. She had accidentally drove into a large... Uh, amount of water it was like really deep and she had called the 911 dispatcher her name is Donna and she had called her and just the way that the 911 dispatcher was talking to her was very disturbing like you would think that a person would have a little bit more sympathy if somebody is in like a, a, a devastating um situation where they might pass away you she was supposed to comfort this lady but they said she she was hurt the dispatcher 911 dispatcher was hurt telling her to shut up like i'm like <laughs> people are unbelievable man so let's listen to this when Debbie Stevens' car was being swept away by Arkansas floodwaters, she did the only thing she could. She called 911. God, please help me. Lord, please help me. I don't want to die. Operator Donna Renault can be heard trying to help. Don't send up to me, man, man. I want to get somebody out there to you. Just hold on. But about 10 minutes into the 24-minute call, Renault, who had recently submitted her resignation and was working her last shift, appeared to lose patience. I'm scared. I've never had anything like this happen to me before. Well, this, will this will teach you next time don't drive in the water. Couldn't see it, make him. I'm sorry or I wouldn't do. I don't see how you didn't see it. You had to go right over it. Nine minutes later, telling Stevens, Miss Debbie, you're going to have to shut up, okay? I need oh, you to listen, listen to me. Renault did not respond to NBC's request for comment. Now, of course Forsman she did. Police say the call, while concerning, was not criminal. It's a tragic thing. I understand that. Are there things that we need to maybe look at in our response? Absolutely. They need to get their boat out here quick. She's way back there. It took officers nearly an hour to reach her. Stevens was driving her newspaper delivery route. Her SUV hidden in the dark behind a row of trees. See where that light's reflecting? That's where she's at. By the time they pulled her out, the 47-year-old could not be revived. 
her tragic final calls for help, now under investigation by Fort Smith police, taking a hard look at their own response. Blaine Alexander, NBC News. Water coming? So that was the um that was the news coverage on what happened to Deborah Stevens. And That whole situation, that whole situation was crazy. You don't, you don't talk to, now, even though Deborah Stevens' family, they did forgive Donna. That was her last day. Y'all heard them say that she was about to retire. Most of the time, people's last day, they don't really care because they're leaving. They don't care about anything. So now I understand why she she treated that lady like that because it was her last day. She really didn't care about anything. She really didn't care about having sympathy for this lady. And how, how can you tell that lady, oh, you should have seen the water? If you guys look... I know I've drove through water before and it didn't even look like it was that deep. But when I drove through it, it was really deep. So for her to say, oh, you should have knew, you should have knew that it was going to be deep. Sometimes you can't tell when the water is going to be deep, lady. Sometimes you can't tell. And then she was really ignorant when she asked her, um, how tall was she? She was like, how tall are you? And she was like, she thinks she's five something. And she was like, well, it, it's, it's five, I think it's like five foot over there or something, or five feet over there, five feet. You'll be all right. And the lady's literally sitting there crying her eyes out like she's scared. And you're telling her, oh, you'll be all right. I'm going to just take my time on this call. If they come, if they come, if they don't, if they don't. That lady is, she, she, she she's horrible. That's a horrible thing to do to somebody. It says a 911 dispatcher in Arkansas scalded a woman um, stranded in flood water shortly before the woman drowned. The incident has led police in Fourth Smith, Arkansas to apologize and review their policies for emergency response during storms. Deborah Stevens, 47, was delivering papers at about 4.38 a.m. on August 24th when her car was swept away by floodwaters and got stuck in a, um, in a, um, in some trees off the roadway. And it was, the waters was really high over there. Now they say usually over there the waters don't get high, but for some reason, like, it it really flooded that day. And Deborah was saying that she didn't she couldn't tell if it was that high. It didn't look like it was that high until she got right up on it and then she was like, Oh shoot, this water is high. I didn't know it was gonna be this high. Now she was saying now uh Deborah even said um she wanted to get out. She said, Maybe I can get out. She said, I would try to get out and try to walk. She said, but it's the water's high. She said, and I can't swim. And even people that could swim, like sometimes when you're in a predicament like that, sometimes you panic. And even people that could swim could, um, you know, they could uh, possibly drown. So it said her call to 911 was uh, was answered by then dispatcher Donna who was working her last shift as a 911 operator after she had presented her recognition earlier that month. So Donna ain't give a shit. She ain't care. She was like, "This is my last call to." I I think that Donna was trying to help her out, but I think she just got frustrated. Because she she didn't understand how much uh how much danger this lady actually was in. She was not there. She was not there. It wasn't no cameras to show her, hey, this is where she's at and yeah, she's really in danger. We gotta hurry up and get some people to her. Like, but now they said during the call Stevens told Donna she was unable to get out of her car 
because she did not know how to swim. So I told you all that before. She wanted to get out of the car, but she didn't know how to swim. She was scared. She was scared of the water. As waters continue to rise up past um, Stephen's chest and cover her vehicle, she panicked and repeatedly said, I'm going to die. Now, Donna told her, you're not going to die, and I don't know why you're freaking out. Lady, she's freaking out because the waters is rising. Like, the lady is telling you she cannot get out. She cannot swim. And she's telling you that she's scared. Like, this water is starting to rise. Like, <laughs> it's starting to rise to my chest. And it's really starting to get serious up in here, lady. And And on top of that... Deborah was trying to tell her, look, I, I got this phone and my phone's, my phone's going to die if the water and stuff gets all in it. And I think Donna was like, you're worried about your phone and, and you're in there and all this water. Yeah, lay down worried about the phone because how can I, how can I still talk to you? You're stupid behind. How can I still talk to you? And get help where I need it at if my phone goes under submerged in the water. It's going to die. Lord Jesus, y'all. And that lady, she was praying too. She was praying, but at one point, the dispatcher said to Stevens, this will teach you the next time don't drive in the water. I don't see how you didn't see it. You have to go right over it. So, lady, what are you talking about? The lady said... That she didn't even, she didn't even notice how, how high the water was until she got right there. And then she was like, Oh shoot, this, this water is high. I didn't know this water was going to be that high. And you don't know. You don't know how high water, water, water sometimes <laughs> it can be like a mirage. Like you can look at water and you can think that it, it's not that high. But when you get up on it, then you're like, Oh shoot. No, no, no. Um, so it's at roughly about 10 minutes into the call. Stevens asked, um, Donna to pray with her. You go ahead and start the prayer. I'll listen to you. I sure will. Donna replied. This lady is really insensitive. Like, dang, you really insensitive lady. Get me out of this water safely. Dear father, Stevens said in her prayer, sobbing. Now, they said that Donna, the um, 911 dispatcher, did stay on a call with Stevens for 25 minutes. At some point, the dispatcher told Stevens that first responders were also saving other people from flood waters and that many other emergency calls she needed to attend were coming in. And I wouldn't give it, I wouldn't, I would be like, look, lady, well, how deep are they in? Because, lady, look. I'm on the deep end over here, like, and I maybe those people over there, maybe they can swim. But I can't swim, lady, so I can't save myself. So I need you to stay on this line with me. The dispatcher also said the emergency workers were trying to locate Stevens. Now, they said that they couldn't see her because her car was probably already submerged under the water. That's probably why they couldn't see her. The car was probably already submerged all under the water miss debbie you're going to need to shut up i need you to listen to me she told this lady to shut up unbelievable by the time first um responders reached stevens and removed her car out of the water at 6 a.m about a half about what's that say about an hour and a half after she called 911 she was gone y'all she she didn't survive all of the first responders who attempted to save Miss Stevens are distraught over the outcome. For every one of us, saving lives is at the very core of who we are and why we do what we do. When we are unsuccessful, it hurts, ba ba Baker said. Yeah, I'm sure they were distraught over, over this. 
Police said in a statement that they were releasing the recording of the call with great um, reluctance because it contains the audio of a, a person that is dying last moments, as well as the interaction between her and that dispatcher. While the operator's response to this extremely tense and um, sad event sounds uncaring at times, sincere efforts were being made to locate Miss Stevens, the statement said. So the, the dispatcher was getting all kinds of other 911 calls from citizens that were stranded in floodwaters. So I guess everybody was um in the same was probably in the same predicament as um Donna, but it's just that they got to those people earlier than they could um I mean Deborah before um they could get to Deborah. They were able to get to all those other people. Now they said when they were fine, responders said when they were finally able to locate uh, Deborah Stevens' vehicle, the rising water made it, um, made the rescue impossible. And officers on the scene removed his duty gear, um, Don a life vest and was ready to enter the current tied to a rope. But the speed and volume of the water made this attempt very, very hard. Yeah, so th that's that's why she pretty much didn't care. Donna pretty much. I mean, she did have a little bit of care, but and then the way she was talking and stuff, like telling her to shut up and telling her, hey, everything's going to be all right. And she's telling you that it's not going to be all right right now. Like she's telling you that the water is rising. And really, I don't think there's nothing that Donna could have done because she's just a 911 dispatcher. She's not really out there. All she can do is try to stick it out with this lady. But. I feel like Donna didn't have any kind of sympathy for this lady. You don't tell somebody, shut up. All she had to do is, hold on, Deborah, hold on, hold on. I need you to listen to me. I need you to listen to me. She could have said, I need you to be quiet for a minute so I can tell you something. So I need you to listen to me. She didn't have to tell her to shut up. That's very disrespectful. And, and that shows that this lady ain't really have no sympathy. Sad, sad story, man. Sad, sad story. So this is the lady. I'm going to show you all the lady. What is this stuff on here? This is the, this was the dispatcher right here. That's Donna. That was the dispatcher. That took um, Deborah Stevens' calls. Now, hopefully, nobody else has to run across a, a person like that. Like Donna is not the only one that has did some um, some unsympathetic uh, ca a dispatch call of a person that is in distress and needing help. She's she they, they have. A lot of stories like this where the dispatchers were hanging up on people and they were just doing all types of stuff. But yeah, I just want to send my condolences to Deborah Stevens' family and I'm I'm really I'm so sorry that that happened um to you. Like I, I shared with y you guys before that um my niece passed away, she drowned. She, she was eight years old. And she passed away, so I know how this family feels. I know how this family fe feels, but um, like I said before, Deborah Stevens' family forgave Donna because you don't, I mean, even though you don't bring your problems to work, Donna could have been going through something in her life where, you know, 
she she felt like she she felt like she she felt like she wanted to act like this. She felt like she wanted to act like this, and she felt like this is the way she's gonna act. And ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. This is my last call, too. This is my last call. I will never be working at this place again. You know, I'm gonna try my best. But yeah, that was a, probably a really distressing call for the 911 operator, which is her job and her duty to take those type of calls. That's what she signed up for when she, when she was filling out that job application. I'm sure they told her, look, you're going to have some very distressing calls, lady. And, and some of them, I'm saying you got to bite the bullet. But come on, that, that is crazy. That is really crazy. Mm -mm -mm. So, guys, what do y'all think about this? What do y'all think about this whole situation? Do you, do you guys think that the dispatcher was wrong? Or do you think that uh, Deborah Stevens was just, she was too dramatic and she made it very hard for Donna to help her? What do you guys think?